anchor to tell us the topic that we're all here for, which is, you know, what are the new trends, the new secrets, if you will, of digital marketing. And Ipsita, if you would probably speak for 25 or 30 minutes, and then any questions anybody has, and do feel free to ask, you can post it on the chat group, and uh, one of us, maybe Kiran, will, uh, will pick up the chat. Or, of course, you can just indicate that you want to ask a question. We do stop sharp at 9.30, but so we will try and make that time happen. So with that, uh, no introductions uh, required to Ipsita for me, because I know her for the last almost 10 years, because she and I were together uh, working in a in a, the Harsh Goenka RPG group. Uh, Ipsita was part of the communications team. And somewhere during that time, all of you will remember when Prime Minister Modi first got elected, there was this amazing campaign called Chai Pe Charcha. And Ipsita was part of that team. In fact, she had taken a sabbatical for almost a year to live in Gandhinagar as part of Prashant Kishore's team. And they created this whole Chai Ki Charcha campaign. I mean, to my mind, that is probably the most significant marketing campaign this country has ever seen. So Ipsita was one of the architects of that. Since then, of course, I mean, when I left Zensar and started 5F World, Ipsita was my literally my first partner. So we co-founded 5F World. And then she set up a company called Calzum Advisors within the umbrella of 5F World, which is primarily focused on digital marketing and all kinds of digital marketing work, both for Indian clients and for American clients, and has built a very, very successful company. And in that process, I think we've all learned about digital marketing and we continue to learn because it's a completely new area, but we will continue to take that forward as we go. So over to you, Ipsita. Thank you, Ganesh. Um, so I'll just share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. It's a little, hang on. It's a little. All right. So uh, the topic today is really about digital marketing secrets. So, um, I mean, digital marketing is actually not new to any of us. Okay. But just to give you a little background, it all actually started sometime in 1994 with AT&T when, uh, you know, they were actually running these, uh, uh, you know, television ads, which were all, uh, you know, which, which, which were all talking about future technology at that point of time, you know, like paying your tools automatically or uh, being able to, you know, call your kid from the phone booth and there's a screen and you are able to tuck him in and, you know, and things and, and being able to drive by seeing a map on your, uh, pay, on your, um, uh, on, in your car, which was at that point of time, you know, in the early 90s, really far-fetched, which has all come true, but it all started, uh, I mean, so they had these series of ads running and it was great. I mean, people, it had the ad had a great brand recall. Everybody liked it, but there was a disconnect in terms of saying okay, okay you know this is somewhere in the future so at that point of time they actually said we want to give the experience of technology okay to our consumers and hence they actually did this uh, you know they worked with an agency and they created a virtual uh, you know representation of the louvre of the like the top museums of the world like the louvre museum in paris etc of course it was obviously not of the quality it is now when we see these you know 3d immersive structures but they did and at that point of time it was fantastic and they ran this ad this banner ad in hotwired.com and this was launched on 27th october and you could actually click on this ad and then go and actually have a virtual feel of the louvre museum and i think that is where it is I mean, amongst marketers known as the starting or founding of digital marketing. And since then, you know, we have, uh, you know, Google, Yahoo came in and so search engine optimization was born, Orkut came in, so social media was born and so on and so forth. But uh, digital marketing, I think in the world didn't take off before 2005 and I think in India it really took off in 2000 around 2008 because uh, you know once geo came on board and internet was like you know accessible to you know the larger public and and you know we had smartphones and we could start like you know really accessing the internet that's when digital marketing came on for in fact when in 2006 I remember being in ICCA bank and I used to remember that you know we had these big budgets for branding and advertising etc and the while they had we had a decent sized digital marketing team with small budgets and they would do these spidery flowcharts to do email marketing etc which none of us at that point of time were 
breast pie but now i mean the scene is like this that a lot of brands have a digital marketing first marketing budget rather than a atl or an advertising led marketing budget so that is where our journey is but at the same time uh, you know the current situation is such that i mean these are this is a reality of our life uh, whether i mean and, and it is not just relevant to marketers but is relevant to almost everyone number one there is an information overload we are bombarded with information from everywhere and at some point of time our brains actually stop processing that information it's like you know those tv debates that happen uh, you know arnab goswami debates at some point of time it just becomes white noise right so that is what is happening in our life and that we have so much information overload that at some point of time we just stop it the second thing is there's a blurring of lines between industries so it's interesting you know there is nothing today amazon has an eco has a is an e-commerce company but it also has a logistics company okay so logistics is no no longer about blue dart or you know uh, or any of those brands but now suddenly you know if, um, um, an amazon or an e-commerce company like flipkart is having their own logistic services banks have their own technology uh, you know companies and etc uh, etc et so you know at some point of time there's a blurring of lines that is happening and what is happening is that different industries are bringing in their values or their way of working into those peripheral industries that they are getting into so logistics suddenly is is suddenly forced to adopt an e-commerce like at, uh, attitude okay which is something completely different and new for them right internet has taken over the world okay and and by this i don't just mean uh, you know penetration of the internet right it is also the fact that you know the accessibility of internet right it is the accessibility or the attitude of people towards information right earlier we would you know read a newspaper or or you know ask people or you know check out an encyclopedia go to a library but now i mean we don't even want to bother to remember to uh, remember information because it's there at our fingertips on google search on our phones right uh there is a disassociation or an indifference and and i'm sure that a lot of people must be realizing this like you know you you keep getting seeing ads on your instagram profile or on your facebook on you know and it it it's a pretty looking item and you just buy it and then you forget that where have you bought it from and you it's okay there is no loyalty or the fact that you know where did i get it from does it matter because that you know you've just seen that item you liked it and you just bought it so there's a huge amount of disassociation or indifference that is setting in things are changing too fast which we all know and it is difficult for anybody to keep up and keep pace i mean there other than a few uh, organizations which are investing so much in research that they are able to you know maybe stay on top most organizations have come to a point that ki you know let's make the most of what we can and let's not try to you know overdo it because you'll never be able to keep pace with all the things that are changing okay and finally and this is probably the truth which is that technology is making us arrogant i don't mean by arrogant i don't mean that there are people are going to war or anything like that but at the same time what is happening is because of technology there is a feeling amongst customers of instant gratification there is a, a, you know a moving in the fast lane and and if that doesn't happen then you will immediately see a negative reaction right so you you got your delivery 5 minutes late from zomato you sent a nasty post on twitter right so it is a uh, you know technology has led us to be uh, br- consumers to bring it, have a sense of entitlement or arrogance in them which is a truth in which we as marketers need to deal with so keeping this in mind you know what are we saying what are those you know how do you kind of work out on digital marketing right and interestingly digital marketing is littered with jargons um, for performance marketing to all kinds of al- alphabets you will hear cpc crv ros and most of the time a lot of uh, marketers actually get worried or confused as to how do i make my digital marketing successful okay how do i kind of you know bring uh, uh, you know how do i kind of uh, uh, 
what is my what is that i need to do to ensure that ki whatever i am doing out there on the online space is actually bringing in results right and that becomes a a, a big challenge for digital marketers and and what we have done is over the years that we have been working in the space of digital marketing there are about few things that have popped up to us as what i would call as areas which we feel are sure shot ways of ensuring that you succeed in your digital marketing the first and and probably the most important thing and is invest in building your brand strategy and message right uh, a lot of organizations don't really uh, you know put that effort into really saying what is my positioning what is my what is that one key message what is that um, you know uh, what is it that is my differentiator and and uh, and and and, uh, and at at one point of time you will find for example we work a lot in the it and technology sector and we find that there are a whole lot of companies out there who are talking the same five things and there's absolutely no differentiation or nothing that you can turn around and say that you know how do i choose one from the other so what is that brand what is that uh, you know what is that connect that i can create with my customer is sort of missing in a lot of uh, organizations and it doesn't matter whether you are in the digital or the uh, offline space this is one mantra that needs to work now while you are in the digital space uh, you know and i'm i'm just giving some examples of companies which have done great work in building a brand strategy so we all know dove right and we all know that dove has always celebrated real beauty and that is the positioning that they take they are talking about that every woman is beautiful right now interestingly unlike a lot of many organizations which when they move on to the digital space they forget their core brand values or the core brand message dub is actually really expanded into the digital space very beautifully and carried that brand message forward and interestingly the digital space actually offers dub to expand on that brand message so right now if you go on to dubs digital platforms you will talk, you will you know they have expanded the message of you know every woman being beautiful to body positivity mental health uh, you know um, um, even to the extent of saying inclusion in terms of that a trans woman is also beautiful right so that that they have taken that and they have pivoted that into a digital medium and expanded it the second um, you know ex example i want to give is airbnb which we all know is a born in digital brand it was born on the internet and it is a dig digital first brand and and you know uh, and of course i mean they've done all the right things uh, in terms of digital marketing that people talk about which is performance marketing um, uh, conversion marketing they have done um, uh, search engine optimization google adwords etc etc all the things that you would talk about that actually go into data driven marketing but to this date if you ask the airbnb founders what is the main reason for the success of airbnb and they will tell you that it is because of the brand building that they did the focus that they put on building their brand so airbnb basically says that ki uh, their brand is all about freedom about exploring about adventure and that is the the core brand message that the that the freedom to explore and and uh, you know and freedom to you know uh, be adventurous is what we as airbnb give you or provide you and this is uh, and this is where they have been so if you look at it in terms of all their marketing campaigns their messaging their communication uh, even for that matter their logo okay is really about adventure it's about moving and uh, and seeing exciting things gaining new experiences etc and they have repeatedly in no matter what they have done have repeatedly uh, um, you know uh, and consistently relate their brand message and as a result of that today airbnb is the brand that it is the last but not least is a brand that we uh, is a home grown puna brand okay which used to be earlier called early salary okay which now is uh, being has been rebranded as five and the the 
end point in that early salary of five is is that they give you easy loans okay but if they had put their entire brand messaging and their entire brand strategy around saying we provide you easy loans i don't think they would have been so successful their entire brand strategy and communication and their messaging is about instant gratification it's about saying that ki you know you don't need to wait to get you know uh, to enjoy life to you know uh, to experience things to get that comfort and and if you look at their uh, their messaging in fact i mean to be very honest with you yesterday when i was going through their instagram profile i felt seduced into buying a getting a loan from them because that's the kind of message that they have that their brand message is is and it, it's not about the loan the loan is secondary they don't they're not at all saying that hey you know what here is an easy way to take loan because the minute you start focusing on loan suddenly it becomes a financial instrument and once it becomes a financial instrument then you start thinking oh my god uh, you know do i have the will i be able to pay it back what is the interest uh, rate How, you know what will be the actual amount will i be paying back what is the cost benefit what is the roi etc etc but when you are talking about experience instant gratification happiness it, it changes that entire shift of focus moves towards really you know increasing the dopamine levels in your brain and as a result that's where you know they have so successfully been able to uh, be, become one of the most successful financial instrument companies today in india so this this is my first thing is that absolutely focus on building a brand strategy and brand strategy also uh, you know when you when you get into building a brand message or a strategy it also helps an organization to uh, really take stock of itself you sit down and say okay uh, where am i today what are my goals what is my vision who is my target audience what are my uh, differentiators uh, you know how what do i need to do to really you know gain to get to my vision and when you and and uh, and more importantly when you sit down to do a brand strategy exercise it also brings in a consensus in the organization amongst all the stakeholders in fact one of the things that we do when we do a brand strategy exercise is that we do uh, this entire perception mapping within the organization and we are always surprised to find that every key important stakeholder in the organization has a different point of view and that bringing all of them together on the same page okay it becomes really the starting point of success the second secret that we believe is that you need to build a great website and and you know most people must be thinking that yeah okay so what's so great we all have a website yes you do okay but the quest today the value of a website is probably bigger because a lot of customers potential customers or your audience per se interacts first time with your brand on a web, on your website they don't do it in uh, through physical form or any other form but most importantly the first interaction that they have with you is through your website it is the first impression that is generated and hence it's it's important to build a website which is not just there that i need to build a digital presence but you need to ask the question what is the role of my website what is the role that my website is going to play in my uh, organization sales process in my stakeholders uh, management process what is and what is in my uh, uh, in my business pro, uh, growth agenda what is the role that my website is going to play the second thing you need to understand is who is the audience now typically an answer will come as oh potential customers but when we do a website exercise with our clients we when when we start realizing then people start saying no no you know what um, i also think that uh, you know we want to make sure that you know uh, potential employees are coming on to the website or investors are coming on to the website so there is Uh, the important thing is to map that audience that you want to visit to the website and the easy answer is not potential customers right there are a lot more that go in when you start uh, thinking about it and then uh, it's not just enough to uh, understand who is the audience but also to understand what is their navigation journey when they come on to their website what is it that you do you think is going to be their journey within your website and how do you make sure that that journey is easy it is interesting and you're not losing that uh, that 
uh, visitor why why just because of a break in that journey of the, within the website thirdly it's important that what kind of information are the various audiences looking for okay different audiences look for different kinds of information and the website needs to very smartly cater to all the different kind of information without it looking like a for want of a better word a khichdi so you have to make sure that you are able to bring in that information organize it well overlay it with your brand message and at the same time not alienate the visitors who are coming because they find that the visit information is not relevant so how do you uh, how do you stack that information how do you lay it out that all goes into thing and last but not least is in digital marketing everything is about results is about outcomes so the most important thing you need to think about is what is the end result that you want the website to deliver and you need to bring in those elements to ensure that those results are delivered it could be as simple as people filling a form for interest or it could be as simple as people reading uh, the content on your website but at, it's really important that you understand you articulate and you work towards ensuring you get those end results on your website third is um, influencer marketing okay now influencers thanks to social media we have um, Uh, you know tons of influencers you have macro nano micro uh, mega etc etc a whole load of news influencers and frankly to be very honest with you this is one channel which is going to be in my opinion the channel when it comes to your marketing success and to this day not all organizations are able to explore the power of influencer marketing very well okay one of the organizations which has done a fantastic job and has actually built itself on influencer marketing is a company called sugar cosmetics so when sugar cosmetics was launched it was a bootstrap company they didn't have large marketing budgets to do you know huge amounts of digital advertising and uh, and 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 yeah, and we all know that the cost of customer acquisition through digital advertising is high so what they did was they actually put together a very very interesting uh, influencer marketing plan which was a very nuanced uh, influencer network where they worked with macro influencers they worked with nano influencers they worked with multiple types of influencers and they uh, they built their entire brand and their entire business growth on the uh, foundation of influencer marketing in fact this is one of been one of their most successful influencer marketing posts where uh, you know they could collaborated with a um, with a acid victim uh, acid victim survivor called anmol rodriguez and uh, the whole point of uh, uh, sugar and its its core usp is that it's built for indian skin tones and that is where it uh, it has positioned itself so it was launched at a time when there were no indian cosmetic brands per se who were catering to uh, the indian audience you had your maybelline etc of course you had a lakme but lakme never really you know focused on the indian skin tones they actually brought in the international um, collection so they actually said that you know we are going to make our products uh, you know focus towards the needs of a indian woman and and indian skin tones indian requirements they also positioned themselves in terms of price points at a point where they were looking for the aspirational woman and that's where you know they brought in influencers who would actually so they did not look at saying ki lo you know what let us only uh, um, uh, connect with models or actresses they actually went out and targeted influencers who were real women who were achievers as who were moms who were uh, you know who were working professionals who were motivators uh, at, you know so they that's how they they worked with different kinds of indian women and that's the foundation on which they build their brand and today we all know sugar is one of the largest e-commerce brands in the country and one of the most successful so how do we kind of you know make sure that influencer marketing works for you the first and foremost is understand your target audience and what resonates with them see it's it's like you know i'm a tech company so i will find a tech influencer it's not necessary 
we are actually working with a, a cyber security company okay and they wanted to do influencer marketing their first thought was oh you know what let's only work with tech influencers the guys who are you know op- um, who are talking about new gadgets uh, that have launched and you know new mobile phones etc but in reality when we actually started digging deep about uh, and understanding their target audience we realized that they that their audience is more likely to get in, uh, uh, you know he- likely to hear and resonate with influencers like parents people who are around parent uh, influencers because uh, or people who talk about parenting because you know parenting uh, because uh, one of the big things about antivirus is that it helps your children to stay safe online right uh, people uh, who are uh, giving professional advice that is another set of influencers uh, that uh, you know we found that were more resonating with their target audience because they were talking to working professionals who were working from home so there was no need for us to go and pay that extra big bucks to guys who were tech influencers us because we realized that we could actually you know connect with our audience way better because we understood that what resonates with them the second thing is most influencer marketing um, uh, initiatives fail because everybody looks at what is called vanity metrics and we totally say please avoid that it's great i mean if you're an influencer it it is going to happen vanity metrics will happen you will get great views you will get great likes you will get great comments that's why they are influencers their followings will give you that kind of a uh, this thing what actually is important is to understand that what does that do for your brand how many website visits happened how many uh, uh, how many people um, how many actual sales happened uh, how many people actually connected with your brand how many of the people connected with your instagram profile pages etc so you need to go beyond those vanity metrics uh, third is that please do not see uh, influencer marketing as an alternative cha- advertising channel it is not it is a channel where you can look at clear rois you can look at clear engagement clear brand building and clear sales and that is how it needs to be worked on that you actually sit down and say that hey can i look at this differently okay last is think outside the box and i'll give you an example here when nike again nike as we know is a e-commerce brand for uh, both men and women uh, started off in cosmetics but now has branched out into multiple areas like clothing etc so nike uh, uh, you know actually um, uh, tied up when it launched its entire nike tv channel or tv which is basically their its online space for tips and makeup tips and beauty tips etc etc they didn't go to a beauty influencer instead they went to a comedian called rohan joshi okay and there it is a beautiful fun 9 minute video which i can share with everybody after this because the thing where he actually sits and tries to do makeup on a girl and he's disastrous because he doesn't know anything about makeup and and you know and it's a totally fun thing and that by the end of it you're so hooked on to that entire episode that he has produced that you know you don't i mean it the fact that it's a nike tv e thing has just hit you and caught you okay and it it was a amazing launch uh, you know campaign for nike's uh, you know um, blog brand essentially and it it totally kind of blew apart the internet so you have to think outside the box who would think that you know a beauty um, uh, tips brand would actually you know be uh, tying up with a comedian okay but you it, it works so you have to think outside the box when it comes to influencer marketing um for this seo and in inbound marketing um, you know which is basically that today uh, so so i'll give you an example my um, uh, when i started working in uh, 2002 2003 i was part of uh, uh, a company called shaw wallace which actually got taken over by the ub group and i was uh, working uh, and my friend was actually the brand manager for uh, a brand of whiskey called antiquity which i think everyone knows now but at that point of time it was relatively unknown and uh, you know um, uh, while the rest of us were doing advertisement i was doing a white mischief i was a brand manager for manager for white mischief podcast i was doing this beautiful ads uh, on tv etc the antiquity team was actually focusing on distribution they were ensuring that their 
product is in 80 to 90 percent of the retail stores and it's there upfront visible and that is what actually became the success of the brand because first they focused on visibility they were there where their audience was going to purchase the alcohol and second they worked with multiple re uh, retail outlets to incentivize them to push antiquity and get people to try it and that really you know brought antiquity uh, you know once people tried it they liked it they wanted more and then of course they moved on to other marketing initiatives etc but this foundation that they laid was the success of the brand right and this is where the same thing applies on the internet you need to be visible you need to be found where your audience is now typically there are two things in it in this one is that your audience has a typical behavior in terms of where they consume information, right? Some people will want to only read news, so they want to you know, go on to Forbes. Some people like to follow certain blog uh, sites, blog forums. Some people want to only get their information from professional communities. So you need to understand where your audience is and where do they like to get that information and be present over there. The second thing is what is, of course, what we call a search engine optimization, which is essentially ensuring that that <clears throat> when someone is searching for information, when your audience is searching for information, you come up as an option for them. And we all know in terms of Google search behavior that nobody goes beyond page three of Google. So you need to ensure that key, you are there upfront on page one or two of Google so that you your audience is clicking on your website so that is where, where on the internet also it's similar to saying that be visible to your audience then only your audience is going to come to your website building communities um, to engage your customers so i'm going to explain this with an example because I, since ganesh already talked about the chai pe chacha campaign we all know that you know the chai pe chacha campaign start kicks the idea came when you know someone took a jive on uh, your prime minister then uh, i mean now prime minister modi that he is a chai wala and he said i want to make use of this and uh, you know we and then we came up with this idea that he should interact with the public which was something that we were anyway uh, toying with as a group that how do we get him to interact with the public on forums so we had in fact done uh, one uh, st student engagement all india student engagement activity called manthan in delhi um, etc but we wanted to do something on a national level and that's where we came the whole concept of chai pe charcha came on board where we said that ki people will gather at tea stalls and mr modi will actually have a real time interaction with people gathered at tea stalls or across India. Now we were a 60 member team, so it was impossible for us to be across India, okay, to do this, right? So this entire program was actually run through Facebook closed groups or Facebook communities. We had Namo for PM Agra, Namo for PM Aligarh, we had Namo for PM Vizag, Namo for PM Trivandrum, Namo for PM etc etc whichever states and uh, towns that we were planning to do this activity and we would gather uh, we would bring all the people who were um, you know interested in um, in or who wanted uh, who were supporting uh, narendra modi onto these facebook communities and through them we were managing the entire execution of um, the whole chai pe chacha campaign it did not happen um, uh, you know through any uh, great technology systems in fact we created and we spent a lot of money and created this very nice volunteer management system which failed miserably Okay, it failed so miserably that we had to actually resort to such a basic thing like Facebook group to manage this entire execution. And not only did we do it for Chai Pe Charcha, but at the time of election, the entire volunteer network was again managed by, uh, by us through this Facebook communities that we had created. So communities, building communities to engage your customers, okay, to bring together, first of all, those customers, engage them, build that loyalty, okay, is, is, is going to go a long way in success of your business growth or your organization growth, etc. And especially when it comes to not for profits, for example, right? I mean, getting your, your 
tribe together is the most important thing because then with that tribe you can do multiple things you can do fundraising you can do um, activities you can scale your work so many things so it's very important to be able to build those communities and engage with your customers and today community development there are so many places even quora for example gives you an option to develop your own community it's not just about facebook or instagram or thing reddit does it so you have so, or linkedin media uh, gives you an option to build communities so oh, there are great options available to really build those communities and work towards activating them so most marketers fail because they build that community but they don't know how to engage people through those communities it is required to have two way communication within your communities to interact uh, with them on real time basis to uh, share knowledge and encourage user generated content so in fact one of the success things about our different multiple facebook groups was the number of user generated content that we were generating everything that anybody did they would you know put it up on the group saying that you know today we went to this housing society this is a banner we put up and that would blow up that whole thing uh, in our favor and in fact this volunteer network was Uh, so large that it was a parallel volunteer network to bjp's own volunteer network and that and it was entirely managed through communities last is uh, to me is uh, storytelling right um, especially because of the information clutter that is out there okay uh, and the noise that is there in the digital world it's absolutely important that you have to slice through that noise and be heard be seen by your customer right so this is a uh, you know this is a campaign that i've done uh, uh, i did myself when uh, in 2015 and 16 so in 2015 there was a lot of noise about renewable energy and wind energy players were you know so, so uh, there were these big targets for solar and wind energy and when uh, and what was happening was because of the focus that was there on solar wind energy players were actually getting sidelined in the policy making process they were losing out and in fact they they were concerned that they would in fact be alienated and uh, so they actually uh, um, you know uh, uh, they approached me through their association which is called indian wind turbine manufacturers association and said that you know what can we do to get the attention of the gov uh, government officials towards wind energy so that's when we said that why don't we do a public advocacy campaign and that's where we actually designed a campaign for them which was a three pronged campaign wherein we did social media for uh, to you know to kind of uh, humanize wind energy for the urban youth so first of all we created this brand so instead of saying calling our facebook page uh, indian wind turbine manufacturers association we actually created this brand name called windergy which is wind energy and we created a logo we humanized it we gave it a a look and feel etc and then we actually talked about wind energy which is really a very boring subject by the way to you know really in manner in in ways that would uh, you know um, resonate with the urban youth so we talked about climate change and if you see the look and feel we you know we have a polar bear sitting on top of an ice cap and you know that you know his home is getting lost and so we we created this uh, you know entire campaign around uh, you know dumbing down wind energy making it relatable to people giving it a a, a touch and feel and we got a huge response so normally uh, you know um, like such things like so across the world we did a research and we found that nobody had ever not, not american wind energy none of the european uh, renewable energy organizations had crossed more than 50000 likes on their pages we crossed over 1 lakh on our facebook page uh, and we had, there was a huge noise people people were sharing etc the second thing that we did was that we actually brought in uh we and we built a community of uh, um uh, local influencers so these were local journalists panchayat heads 
etc and we actually uh, you know kind of brought them together and we converted them as ambassadors for wind energy what this essentially did was that at uh, you know the all the myths and issues that were there on ground for wind energy they started working towards busting those myths so for example there were myths like you know if you live near a wind farm you will uh, get impotent okay a, uh, or you know there will be you will get cancer if you uh, if there is a wind farm at a certain distance so they started busting those myths by engaging the local public and uh, uh, thing the second thing is that a lot of times the wind farms would face agitation because uh, again because of the miscommunication that was there but this local influencer community actually uh, uh, you know the ones this network started working towards raising positive uh, information and positivity before, for wind farm they had zero such occurrence during the time that we ran this campaign and last but not least is that wind energy companies were doing a lot of good work towards job creation towards community development towards uh, 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 um, towards uh, you know kind of uh, helping people so for example suzlon had uh, you know uh, under the wind farms there's a lot of land suzlon had actually created uh, around its wind farms in kerala uh, you know um, a community of women who were in Uh, infected by aids and had been rejected by their families and they were actually living in destitution so they actually had given that land to uh, these women to uh, you know farm that land and uh, over the years those women had were not only earning in uh, growing enough food for uh, to sustain themselves but they had also made a business out of it and they were selling those crops that they were growing and they had actually amassed enough wealth that when they were not able to work they still had comfortable lives and they had created this beautiful community over there so we brought out these stories also through our social media channels etc and we combined all these this positive advocacy work with policy discussion so we tied up with uh, terry which is the energy and resource institute and we did a six city round table wherein we got government we got um, academia industry together to really discuss the issues and policy requirements for wind energy and the most successful thing about this entire campaign was the then uh, joint secretary of renewable energy varsha joshi actually organically heard about this campaign and reached out to iwtma to ask them for a personal presentation and said what is this and what is it that you're going and iwtma actually fulfilled its purpose because they got a chance to you know go and present their uh, requirement uh, Uh, to directly to the decision maker which was the joint secretary so this is the power of storytelling and being heard right and the last one that i will uh, uh, talk to you about is um, the power of video when you're saying uh, be, you know being seen being heard okay it's very important to be able to use content that is contemporary okay and which is making waves so right now at this point of time video is the name of the game okay and uh, this is where uh, you know and and today if being seen and being heard means building video short format consumable micro videos and it's something that should be done kiran do i have time to play a quick 2 minute video or should we uh, i can then send it later i think you should send it later we're running short of time okay. uh, yeah okay so my last point here is really saying explore alternate channels right most of us say that oh you know what digital marketing karna hai to let's do emails let's do social media advertising let's do google adwords but really if you want to do successful digital marketing then explore alternate channels it you need to think out of the box for example there is ngo called social teas okay which is all really about adoption of animals right they did this beautiful thing wherein they actually created um, you know they created this adopt a puppy campaign on this dating app called tinder so they actually took 10 puppies and they you know abandoned dogs and they created their profile on tinder okay and it was called swipe right for adoption right and you know their people uh, you know and they put the parameters and people got matched to these puppies right and 
the campaign was so successful that within 10 days two of the puppies got adop adopted and they raised like two years of money worth just by putting looking at an alternate channel of doing a campaign so they could have done the whole thing you know like a facebook campaign and shown like destitute puppies but they didn't do that they actually looked at an alternate channel and it was so different and such a great result so you need to look at and think outside the box and that is the uh, thing that look at and explore alternate channels if you're a if, if it doesn't matter whether you're a b2b or a b2c or an, a not-for-profit alternate channels are available to you and nobody will shy away from uh you know uh, nobody will uh, like say oh my god why are you you know you're a b2b brand you're a um thing why are you doing it in this channel if it's work if, if 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 the campaign is well thought through your audience is there you understand your audience you know how to communicate with them it will work so thank you very much that comes to the end of my presentation and um, i'm happy to answer any questions wow great tip shita i mean i think everyone's been pretty enlightened today by the different brands you've presented to us uh, uh, can i request you to stop sharing the screen yeah sure yeah perfect all right, so um, we have, I think, just five minutes, so we can do a quick question answer round. I yeah, think. I have a question, if I can please come in. Sure, sure, sure. please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm here thanks to Ms. Nanda who invited me for this session. Thank you very much, uh, Rotary Riverside. It was a wonderful session, Ispita. Thank you. Ispita, sorry, and uh, really learned a lot. I had a very quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, with the advent of uh, digital marketing and, you know, most of the brands following the customer journeys. Mm -hmm. What do you feel is the future of television and print? You know, I used to be with Mahindra and I saw the transition happening. I saw the desperation that uh, the television and print selling team showed. What do you think is their future? Are these medium going to exist? So, see, television is not going anywhere in the sense that you have uh, OTT. Star Plus is not going anywhere. It's got Hotstar. Okay. And let's the only thing is that the, the there's a transition happening. So, you know, when I was saying internet is everywhere, right? Now, the thing is that uh, uh, there's a very popular serial called Anupama, right? Anupama does a fantastic job of uh, in uh, television, uh, as in in episode branding. Every time they have to do it. So, Anupama is all about these two families, basically. Okay. So, every time they have to do a transition from one family to the other, they show this road with a hoarding. Okay, and that hoarding always has some of the other brand. Okay, um, and in fact, I think recently, uh, for the last couple of episodes, I think they didn't have a brand advertisement. So they're showing a blank hoarding, which is very clear to anybody in marketing that the space is available, come and use it, right? So it's, it's just going to change. It's not going to go away. So you're going to, it's going to change in different ways. Like, for example, we're talking about the in-serial advertising will be one opportunity. The second thing is that, that uh, you know, how do you uh, uh, transcend or, uh, you know, see television um, uh, will remain. So like, for example, my parents, right, they watch OTT on television, right? So brands need to rethink that how am I going to use the OTT platform for my advertising and there are different ways in which uh, things are coming up okay like I just told you in fact there are uh, so many interesting such examples of in television or in serial advertising right now happening so yeah that's one way I see it evolving thank you Ipsita I won't take much more time I think what you mentioned in a sentence would mean connected TV would survive yeah absolutely Thank you very much. We'll connect separately on and have a longer chat on this. Definitely. Thank you. We have time for another question. Um, yes, please go ahead. Kiran, do we have time? Yeah, we do. We do. Go ahead. If you, you gave some wonderful examples of brands, you know, large brands or corporate entities for digital marketing. Uh, you didn't you didn't touch upon digital marketing as a promotional tool for individuals. It could be a writer, it could be, it could be any individual professional. And mm -hmm. one is seeing a lot of basic attempts of this on LinkedIn, but I haven't seen any real professional work. Have you done any work on besides the Modi campaign, digital marketing <laughs> a tool for individual promotion? So let me be very honest with you. I myself have a social media channel 
uh, as a travel influencer right okay. so so as an individual i'm promoting myself as a travel influencer right and to be very honest with you the tenants are the same when i study uh, and i see the work of other travel influencers right all the things that i mentioned to you okay are things that i see them doing okay every successful travel influencer has built a unique brand for themselves for example there's this girl called akanksha monga who's basically built a brand on you know uh, adventure solo travel right so you have different in thing they build their own niche their own brands okay a lot of influencers do collaborations right with each other okay uh, smaller influencers do collaboration with bigger influencers that is influencer marketing right uh, content no i understand that. i understand hmm. so so yeah i mean the tenants my, remain the same it's the execution which may be at a smaller scale that's where i think is uh, what is there for individuals you are an author i know so i mean at your no no i'm not i mean i'm sorry yeah i mean okay i just use the example of author just like that not because mm -hmm. i mean i've written just one book my second one is coming out but my question is not because of that sure but i would say that as an author you also have a niche space right and that's where you need to build your brand okay and the tenants or the key uh, pillars that are there will apply whether it's an individual an organization a business large or small brands or startups yep thank you i'll i'll connect with you on this separately sure i'd like um, to see your uh, i think we yeah. have only time for one more question so if anyone have a question Can, I think Preeti had raised her hand. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Abhita, for this great session, and thank you, uh, Rotary, also for organizing this. And special thanks to Ganesh for inviting us here. So, um, as Ganesh also mentioned, uh, we all are like you know startup founders. So, at the early stage of startup, so when we try looking into the brand building or even the creating a brand, I mean. next step is the digital marketing of course but you know creating a brand making it into a brand is again a huge lot of investment so what you would talk about it like you know because you know how the startup struggle with the funds basic absolutely so uh, see you don't have to nobody becomes a large brand uh, you know overnight right it's a journey the point is that in building a brand there is you have to be you have to first have that brand strategy in place what is your brand what's your brand personality what is your identity what is that brand positioning what is the brand message okay uh, and then the next step really becomes that even if you're doing small things right how you're writing an email to a customer how are you setting sending a proposal to a customer those all reflect your brand right so it, it 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 has to start it has to start small it doesn't have to become big on day one you don't have to spend lots of money you have to start with the very basics and build on it uh, year on year to really establish that brand and uh, to be and let me be a uh, thing airbnb is a big brand right now but at one point of time it was nothing right and they did their entire strategy on what is called user generated content right they didn't have the money or the capability to build beautiful po social media posts or you know um, youtube content etc so what they essentially did was they actually you know uh, encourage the people who were using their platform to generate content and that was being uh, used as a brand message for them which was uh, you know so they worked so user generated content is another beautiful way of getting brand message across so for example and in b2b companies also it can work for example lot of people don't do video case studies right you do these testimonials which are written uh, you know in in codes and you know with thing nobody i mean really sees value in that but it, like the way to do it is to get video case studies for example fantastic way of getting brand endorsement so there are different small ways of doing it you don't have to go the whole hog and start shouting from the roof that this is my brand take it easy start small ensure that the brand communication is consistent in everything use small small uh, you know pivotal agit activities to uh, get to that point where you have the funding to do a large brand campaign 
Thank you. Thank you. For okay, we have just one more question left. I think Naomi had a question. Um, so let her go ahead. And after that, we're going to have to, unfortunately, ask Epshita to put her number in the chat if people want to have a conversation with you on. Go ahead, Naomi. Hi. Hi, good morning. So um, I was just wondering when we reached the SEO bit, um, when you hire somebody for SEO, whether it's an individual or an agency, then what are the parameters that you would look for, A, and B, uh, like how long should you give an SEO agency to like, you know, show some sort of results because SEO is a slow process. So mm -hmm. uh, how long would it take before I can really decide whether, you know, the agency is actually performing or not? Because all of these professionals come with a lot of technical words and, you know, uh, you really don't know whether you're going in for the right thing or the wrong thing because there are a lot of people who also use um, other means to generate traffic, which looks like traffic, but is not mm -hmm. really traffic. Obviously, the sales will tell in time, but mm -hmm. yeah, how do you know the difference between a good SEO uh, agency or an individual and someone who's not so as good? Actually, how do you we get do the asked performance? this question often that why should we hire you? You know, we also do SEO, right? And the thing is that in my mind, the way to evaluate an SEO agency is, of course, you have to see, evaluate their technical know-how. But more importantly, I think that especially if you are a young company, right, and you're looking for, I mean, your budgets are, are limited and you know that you need to get those results, it's very important to also be able to uh, work, uh, work with an agency which is bringing to you uh, uh, which is making that extra effort, right, of saying that, you know what, I will help you to think through strategy, okay, the conversation is not just about, ki, oh, you know what, I will make 300 backlinks in the month, okay, but more saying that, okay, these are the results you want to achieve, and I will focus on achieving these results, so what is that outcome that, uh, you know, that they are committing to, okay, and which is not activity but actual outcome are they saying that you know i will bring your ranking on uh, you know these keywords up by x percent or uh, am i going uh, i will bring your website uh, you know da okay uh, up by this percent uh, to, to this uh, number these are things which will actually have genuine impact right um so what, how are they talking to you in terms of strategy and what outcomes are they committing to you in terms of outcomes and not activities, right? Quantifiable activities, but quantifiable outcomes is where I feel that you should focus on in evaluating. Second is that depend uh, that typically what happens is that I believe that you should have a phased wise milestone. So you don't say that it's a long, slow process. So we'll evaluate after one year. There's, there is always a phased wise uh, outcome possible. Like what we do is we look at look at quarterly deliverables to our clients in terms of quarterly outcomes and quarterly outcomes we deliver so we we put in a milestone based um, 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 deliverable plan and we focus on that and quarter on quarter in seo you can show value okay thank you no right thank you so much everyone uh, for your participation now can i ask uh, Vikram to please do the vote of thanks. Is Vikram there? Hi, Ipshita. Sorry. Ipshita, Ip that was an outstanding session. Thank you. And uh, I think uh, it's probably one of the best I've heard. And I think, um, you know, if you can do half the things <laughs> that we think you can, you'll, you, you will be an outstanding marketeer. So, Thank you. Uh, Thank you for uh, your time, sharing your time and talent with us today. And, and I think without a doubt, if you look at the comments in the chat box, you'll find that um, almost everybody uh, agrees with me when, uh, you know, this, then when I say that uh, this was, this was a really um, impressive presentation and, and an even more impressive, very direct um, talk. I thought uh, that you were very clear. You were on, you know, especially the fact that as a marketing person, you're more focused on outcomes rather than activity, which is, you know, that has been our, our bane over the years. And we've had lots of marketing people who actually just do that. They give spiel and, and nothing else. So your focus on outcomes is very refreshing. And uh, your uh, uh, engagement was very, very direct and very simple. And uh, we love that. Thank you very much, uh, Ipshita, for Thank being you. here today. Thank, Thank you. you.
So um, as per our rotary, uh, you know, uh, trend, I will call on Vardhvanji. Yes. Do we have something? Right 12 there. lines. Yeah. <laughs> Vikram, not 12 lines. I, in fact, endorse what uh, Vikram said in terms of thanking Ipshita for the presentation. It was absolutely awesome. Uh, and now for the four lines, uh, directly to the point. Maine pucha nag se, nag snake. Maine pucha nag se vish dharan ka raj. Bola bina fufkar ke puje nahi samaj. That is for the world of marketing. And then comes Ipshita. Uh, Ipshita ki kamana karo kis tarah digital ki sadhana? Ipshita ki kamana karo kis tarah digital ki sadhana? Vigyapan vitran ke liye aaj bole bina fufkar ke puche nahi samaj. Thank you, Ipshita. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Varmanji. Um, can I call upon Sandeep to please do the honors of giving us the joke of the day? Morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. President. And thank you, Ipseka, for this lovely, lovely and very informative oh, session. Oh, oh. Sorry? Nothing, it was Rohit. <laughs> Rohit, okay. Yeah, Rohit has a habit of doing all that. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> गई एक पेट शॉप पे और बोली अरे वो पेरेट बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है मेरे को चाहिए तो जो सेलर था उसने बोला कि अरे उसका नाम मेरी है बट आई रिकमेंड यू डोंट टेक हर बिकॉज शी इज गॉट अ वेरी फाउल माउथ इसे नहीं नहीं डोंट वरी यू नो आई हैव गॉट दीज टू पेरेट्स टॉम एंड जेरी एंड दे प्रे बाय द डे एंड नाइट उनकी कंपनी में सब ठीक हो जाएगा ठीक है भाई आई आई हैव डन माय जॉब ऑफ वार्निंग यू Now do what you want to. तो वो ले गई मेरी को अपने घर और टॉम एंड जेरी के पिंजरे में छोड़ दिया तो टॉम चिल्लाया अरे जेरी वर्शिप करने की जरूरत कोई नहीं है अभी अपनी प्रेयर्स है बिन आंसर No questions came from Vikram. <laughs> I, I was I was ordered as usual not to. Don't go too crazy. Don't see nae. No, no, very good. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, one of the best. I think one of the better uh, digital marketing se marketing sessions we've had, uh, Ipshita. So yes, definitely. Kudos to your presentation. Um, excellent, excellent, excellent talk today, Ipshita. Thank yeah. you. I must I must get in touch with you. Please do. Looking forward. Thank you. Great. Um, so, yeah, I think now we can call kind of close the meeting. So, thank you everyone for your attendance. Ipshita, have a great day. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank Kiran, you. Just a quick, uh, Kiran, this is Mridula here. Ipshita. Hi, Mridula. Sorry. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, just a just a reminder to all votarians about tomorrow's session, uh, December twenty second at ten thirty a.m. at Santa School in Gherwada. Those who can make time, please do drop in. uh it will be uh, it will be a great event and uh, looking forward to your participation thank you for the love all right thank you everyone for very generous contributions everybody thank you i want to thank you thank you ishvita at 10:30 at samta school all the details are in the riverside uh, whatsapp group i will send them all right thank you everyone have a great day thank you bye bye